Tell me, if you saw one of these coming after you, would your first instinct to try and stop it from killing you be to do this? No, I would run. What is up, everybody? Random, random man here. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe and be well during this unpredictable time as I am here bringing you my review for Jurassic World Dominion. Taking place four years after the destruction of Isla Nublar, the plot of this sci-fi action film sees dinosaurs now living and hunting alongside humans all over the world, with this fragile balance reshaping the future and determining once and for all if human beings are to remain the apex predators on a planet that they now share with history's most fearsome creatures. Going into this movie, I was looking forward to seeing it. Now, I should preface this review by saying that this is coming from someone who, since a young age, was obsessed with dinosaurs. Since I was about preschool age or younger, I was just so adamant in taking in every ounce of information on dinos that I could find, whether it's books, museums, games, any kind of media. Except for movies, mostly. In fact, I did not see Jurassic Park for the first time until about a decade after my initial dino craze phase, as I probably would have been mortified if I saw it at a young age. But when I did see this later into my teens, I absolutely adored it, just like mostly everyone else does. I mean, what more is there to say about it? It needs no introduction, it's one of the best sci-fi movies ever made, and it's one of my personal favorites from Steven Spielberg. He did return for its sequel, The Lost World Jurassic Park, and while it's not as groundbreaking as that 1993 film, it does have its moments, including the rampage in San Diego. Then we fast forward to 2001's Jurassic Park 3, and uh, I think it's easily the weakest of the franchise, mostly because I barely remember anything about it, and I found it to be boring. Then we jump more ahead to 2015 with Jurassic World, which I personally really enjoyed. It revitalized the franchise to a mostly successful extent, and I thought that there was potential for what could be done in living up to its title. Three years later, 2018 saw us get Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which I like more than most other people. For a lot of people, they fell off of this franchise with this entry, and I thought that there was a lot of potential here that was seeping into the roots of it, though I thought that the halfway point did make it jarring of a switch in style to where it initially began as a disaster movie, and then it ended up being a haunted house flick, but in any sense, I still mostly enjoyed myself watching this film, and by the time it ended with that cliffhanger, oh, it was ripe with more potential for what could be done worldwide in dinosaurs being let loose, which is why I was still mostly looking forward to Jurassic World Dominion, in that this was going to be concluding both trilogies and the franchise as a whole, and saw the return of some legacy characters from the initial trilogy. Plus, summer movie season has been heating up as of late, and I was in the mood for some more action fun, like we got a couple of weeks ago with Top Gun Maverick. My favorite movie of the year thus far, I have now seen it twice in theaters on its historic opening weekend, no less, and Jurassic World Dominion is yet another legacy sequel that is barely coming out after being long delayed by this current pandemic like Top Gun Maverick. Luckily for me, I was able to head out and see this thing on opening night in theaters where it is only currently available. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Chris Pratt returning as Owen Grady the former Navy vet and Raptor trainer who is here for this big conclusion. And Pratt is the ever charismatic presence he is in this movie, like he was in the previous entries and just about everything else he is in. 
Also returning is Bryce Dallas Howard as Claire Deering, the former manager of Jurassic World and now the founder of a protection group trying to free dinosaurs that have been let loose in the wild but also not succumb to exploitation and all-around poaching. I think that she is the MVP of this entire trilogy, actually. Starting out as this very stuck-up and by-the-book business type in the first Jurassic World film, and now evolving into a more proactive figure. And I also really enjoyed the chemistry between herself and Pratt as this couple, which uh, other characters even point out it's kind of weird to see them being this couple because they act weird about it and they are this thing. Also returning is Isabella Sermon as Maisie Lockwood. The human dinosaur clone introduced in the previous film and is basically the adoptive daughter of Owen and Claire. And I thought that she was more solid this time around in having more of a purpose, also in being the MacGuffin of sorts in being sought after in what she did after uh, the events of the last movie and also the time jump in between having her grow up and coming to terms with who she is. Even Omar C from Jurassic World returns as Barry, the former raptor trainer alongside Owen for this pivotal moment that happens in the uh, beginning of the second act or so. And also returning to a smaller extent are Justice Smith and Daniela Pineda as their characters from Fallen Kingdom, who only have a couple of moments here towards the beginning, but it's nice to see them still. Now we come to the three legacy characters returning from the initial Jurassic Park trilogy, starting with Sam Neill as Dr. Alan Grant, who I have a bit of a soft spot for because his character's name is the same name as mine. For those that don't know, my real name is Alan, A-L-A-N, same spelling. And I think that here he has the same kind of small during charisma in a different way compared to Chris Pratt that he brought in the first Jurassic Park film. Laura Dern also returns as Dr. Ellie Sattler and I think that with her and Neil being this will they won't they kind of couple thing similarly to how Owen and Claire are, their chemistry here just sparks up again I think like in the first Jurassic Park film and just with uh, Sattler herself being a proactive character as well. Then we have, I think, just about everyone's favorite, Jeff Goldblum as Dr. Ian Malcolm, bringing his Goldblum-isms back in here with him initially not having much to do when he is brought back into the fray of this series, but as the movie does progress, he does come back in tow to have more of what we expect and love from this actor and character. Another legacy character returning from previous movies is B.D. Wong as Dr. Wu, who was in charge of the cloning program that has since brought utter chaos around the world here. And like with some other characters, it's nice to see him as well. And then we get into some of the new characters here. There are a couple more characters that are brought into the fold. Some such as DeWanda Wise as Kayla, a former Air Force pilot who helps out our main characters here, and I thought she was a badass. I thought that the women in this movie really did bring a lot here, especially her with what she does in being a part of this underground black market for uh, people to get stuff in between imported and exported, some of which involving dinosaurs, but here with her finding a bigger purpose to help out the world at large. That is something I did like to see. And then lastly, we have Mamadou Athi as Ramsey, who is a higher up in this corporation that our main characters are trying to get to, to stop the plot from going awry. And I thought his presence added a bit as well, because it brought a new generation of very conscious people trying to stop an ecological disaster from happening now that dinosaurs are let loose. I thought that just about everyone here did well with their given parts, and getting into the writing, which was done by Emily Carmichael and Colin Trevorrow, the latter of which has returned to also direct here after sitting out the last Jurassic World film, I think that what they have done in their setup of this movie, directly connecting with the last one, made it start out strong. 
dinosaurs coexisting with humans and it has caused nothing but problems all around and they are now coming ahead to a point where an ecological disaster is imminent to where dinosaurs may become the top dog or top creatures of the earth like they used to be. The way this narrative plays out is twofold, with plot A involving Owen and Claire going off and trying to rescue Maisie, who has been kidnapped with Beta, the offspring of Blue, the raptor that Owen is close with as they have been shipped off to this tech company named Biosyn. And then plot B involves our legacy characters at Biosyn going in to infiltrate the facility to expose all of the misdoings that they have been doing that have been causing the world to fold over and succumb to the dinosaurs roaming the earth once again. And as I said, I enjoyed the way this movie began in setting all of this up together. The way that we see our characters in where they are after the last movie, and also the way we bring in our legacy characters here, it did not feel forced at all. I thought it worked organically into the story, and they weren't just dropped in out of nowhere. They felt like they were necessary to the plot, especially after after we saw Ian Malcolm only in a couple of scenes at the beginning and end of the last movie, here I thought that their inclusions were more meaningful. It also goes in the way of the action here in ramping up given that there is a lot more dinosaurs on screen here than ever before and of course as someone like myself who has admired dinosaurs since a young age, that is something that I got a bit of a kick of. As I saw these main plot points play out separately and simultaneously, I was mostly enjoying what I was seeing until I saw cracks in these through lines seep through to where I had the two biggest issues of this movie arise for me. And it's that this movie feels crammed and overlong in trying to do too much for its own good in being this epic finale. There's a lot that is thrown into these two through lines to have a lot more happen and make it feel more epic in scope. And with one part involving the biosyn aspect of this film, the CEO of the company is obviously this villain that is set up to be somebody who is in it for himself and is in it for trying to be someone with a sense of power. And this character was initially introduced in Jurassic Park, but is now played by a different actor, Campbell Scott. And yeah, he is just this one note villain that you know coming from a mile away. Then there's other story elements that I liked more than the Biosyn aspects that I felt that were also thrown in just to be thrown in here to create further world building without digging deeper to what is initially presented. Like this literal underground black market involving dinosaurs where there are smugglers and just other dirty dealings involved here which has the character of Kayla get introduced and I wanted more of that but it felt like it was a part of a different movie altogether and in a way it felt like multiple movies or two at least were thrown together to try to make for this big epic finale. I will say though that this does bring out the highlight of the movie for me and it's the chase all through Malta where Owen, Claire, and Kayla are trying to escape out of this place and it has these raptors chasing after Owen on a motorcycle. Same with Kayla and Claire trying to drive away and get onto this plane to get out of there and go to Biosyn. That is shown off prominently in the marketing for this movie and yeah, it is cut together in a very fast paced and erratic extent, but I thought it worked for what the movie was trying to do. And directing wise, I think that Colin Trevorrow does have some inspired choices here. Like early on in some more quiet and slower moments, I thought there were some nice visual uh, flares here. And then when it comes to the action, as I mentioned before, we see a lot more dinos here than we have before in this franchise. And that brings out a lot of glee for viewers like myself seeing different kinds here and me trying to identify by each and every one of them. Though, it does come with a double-edged sword in that it's a lot of CGI being used to try and create these creatures. In close-ups, it's a lot of noticeable practical effects and animatronics, which I always appreciate. But when there's a lot more of these creatures on screen, it's noticeable to see that they were made up in a computer and later imposed into the frame. Like during the Malta sequence, it is noticeable there, given that 
it's played out during broad daylight, though during darker and more nighttime sequences, it's less noticeable. Then there's the way the movie is cut together and all around paced. I mentioned how it is over long and it teetering towards two hours and 30 minutes. Yeah, I was feeling that running time ease into where the last act was playing out and I thought to myself, oh, we still have more of this movie to go than what we are just seeing in these characters coming together and doing what they're doing. In that sense, I do feel the franchise has run its course by now with both trilogies and without spoilers and the way it all ends together. I think that it ends in a fitting way to where both trilogies are accounted for and we see how the world is given now that dinosaurs and humans are coexisting. There's a lot of that, and I do think that a lot of people are going to find so much fault with this in how the movie is so preposterous, like the rest of the franchise is as a whole. And I say this both with a personal attachment to these creatures and also an acknowledgement to the faults that the series has had overall. I would be lying though if I said that I did not enjoy myself mostly in a relative sense to watching this film all play out. Like Michael Giacchino's score I think is another positive point of this film as well as the callbacks to prior movies for viewers that are vigilant enough to find them. And speaking of them and the diehard fans of the Jurassic franchise, this movie really is a movie for them or for anyone who is stuck with this series as long as they have been watching it for almost 30 years now, almost three full decades we have gotten movies in this series. And even with this movie being the end of this franchise as we currently see it on film, life always finds a way and this franchise is gonna be brought back in some way. And right now I know there is an animated Camp Cretaceous series on Netflix, which I haven't seen any of. So the Jurassic franchise is still alive and well for many to see. And I think that for anyone that has not been with the series as long as it's been around, then this is not going to win you over. I do not think this is the worst of the franchise overall, though, like many have said, in this getting a mostly unfavorable response, as Jurassic Park 3 still sticks out in my mind, or does not stick out in my mind for how forgettable I thought that film was, as this movie does have its moments here and there that I thought did bring some entertainment to me. And I think that for a lot of people, that is going to be just enough to what is to be seen here. And for all of that, I cautiously recommend it. My final verdict for Jurassic World Dominion is three additive five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Jurassic World Dominion, social media links, in the description, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.